Hi, I'm Michal, I work at Sunscrapers. I'm going to talk about business logic in Django. Just a short introduction, I wanted to say that rather than today, and uh, in, in comparison with, with the other talks that we're doing, I'm not going to talk about one new technology that we find exciting, I'm not going to talk about a new library that I wanted to introduce. I want to talk actually very briefly today about just one idea I have had, uh, I've had uh, recently. Um, so for that reason my today's presentation is more of a request for comments. <coughs> I'm not completely sure that my idea makes perfect sense. That's why I wanted to actually give this talk and I wanted to actually I'm looking more forward to having the discussion afterwards than giving the talk. I already have had this idea for, for a couple of weeks so it's already boring to me but I'm really more, more, more excited and more interested in what you have to say. So again but it's going to be more RFC than, than a monolithic presentation. And I think this also fits our schedule today because I will honestly try and talk for 10-15 minutes. I will honestly try to keep it as short as possible. You will see some slides I already have, pres I already have prepared because I would like to, to, to give it as a, more, as a longer or a more complete presentation. I will skip some of them. Don't worry about that. Okay, I'm, go I'm going to talk about two or three ideas depending, uh, depending on, uh, on, uh, on how it goes. So just a quick introduction. I want to talk about business logic or business logic layer in Django. So, but, and, and what I mean by that is a layer, a layer of a piece of software which encodes the real world business rules. And the key word here is the real world business rules. Right, so this is, this, is, this is not a perfect, I know it's not a perfect definition, but it will just do for this presentation. Right, so, so uh, in this sense, business logic or business lo logic layer is the layer of, uh, of, um, of your software, of, of the system that you're writing, that really touches the business that you're writing it, or that really touches the areas where your software tries and solves some business problem, or automate some problem, or augment some some, some business some business workflow. And what it does, it, it usually determines how data can be created, which data and where can be displayed and where, how it is stored, how it can be changed. So all the uh, all the um, all the state, which state changes are possible by whom, and so on and so on. Usually, it prescribes how business objects. We'll be talking about business objects interact with one another and that's, that's the layer that enforces the routes or, or the methods by which those, 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 those business objects can be, uh, can be accessed or updated and so on and so on. Uh, I'm pretty sure that you know what we, what we mean, by, uh, what we mean by, by business logic. The first idea that I want to talk about and I, I take it as pretty much the default idea that is widely supported by Django that basically says make your models fat, right? Meaning, what I take it to mean is that if you don't know where to put a bit of code, and if it doesn't clearly go anywhere else, like if you or form or serialize or anything else, you can just go ahead and put it in the model. Right? If you don't know where it goes and goes, it, it goes into the model. And yeah, it, it should somehow it should somehow relate to an object. I guess everything somehow relates relates an object. So yeah, uh, this this idea has been presented as a or is talked about as a common pattern in MVC style programming in the sense that to build thick or fat models and thin controllers, which in Django which in Django translates to fat or, or, or thick models and and thin uh, and thin views. This just puts. Uh, this just. Tr this just means that you put lots and lots of small methods in your models. So that's fat models and thin views. Uh, uh, and, and, and views will be thin in the sense that views will be uh, will be the bit of code will be the layer that just uses those methods. And you try and keep the uh, and try and keep the logic or, 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 or the code of your views and forms. As minimal as possible. You try and you, you try and keep them thin. Obviously, having some kind of code in your views is going to be necessary, and this is fine. Having uh, having a bit of code in your forms is going to be fine. Usually, especially when we talk about real-world business applications, 
uh, forms and views are more complicated than the standard Django tutorial. There is something going on, you usually modify your forms on, uh, on the go. This is fine, but all the methods that do something with, uh, with the things that we call business objects, they go to uh, they go to uh, they go to the model layer, right? Um, this is proposed. This is proposed because all, all people who are who are in favour of this approach uh, give at least three reasons to do that. The first reason is keeping your code dry. So I'm talking about prone pros of this uh, uh, of this approach right now. The first is dry, right? So rather than putting uh, rather than repeating, repeating yourself and putting a lot of common kind of repeated code into views or into forms, you put them into model and so that since you might have a lot of uh, you might have a lot of views manipulating the same model, you might have a lot of forms manipulating the same model, but it usually boil, uh, I mean this uh, this workflow usually boils down to touching a, a couple of models. Putting this code into models at least keeps your code dry. You do not repeat yourself. The second pro of the approach is that it's easy, easily testable. Right? You, you break up your logic into small methods on the model so that it's very easy, to, those small methods are very easy to unit test. And that, that's true, I, I actually agree with that. Uh, and, the third, uh, uh, and the third reason that is usually quoted as, as a pro of this approach is that this approach is readable. And actually I would like to put a lot of emphasis on that. And I, let me just give you a, a quick example. It's very simple, very real example. Let's say your task would be we were building a company blog. So sooner or later you will get a uh, you'll get a post mod, uh, you'll get a post model which has a title, which has a text, the text, and importantly for today's discussion, it has a status. Right? You have three different status, three possible status. You have a draft, yeah, a, a post can be drafted, a post can be approved, a post can be published. Um, Right, so we have a positive small integer field because you guys 30,000 statuses is probably enough in your database, possible statuses is probably enough in your database. Um, this is the first step, and then when we start talking about business logic, um, someone from your business comes up to you and says, alright, that's, that's, that's perfectly nice, but then you see, um, we need to stop people from publishing blog posts which are not approved. So you will get some people, you, you will get the writer, you will get the editors, but you will also get supervisors who need to approve, uh, uh, who need to approve your post and only after they have approved your post you can, uh, you can publish that. Right? So you write more or less something like that, at least in the beginning, you have a very small system, you have a, this is a, that's just a blog, I mean there is, there is not much to it. Right? So you write something like that and you are happy with that. You have even include a custom exception here. Perhaps you have custom exceptions, uh, you know, in your uh, hierarchical exceptions in your in your Django uh, in your Django app, and that's fine. That's nice. But you should be happy with that, I guess. Um, the reason why you should be happy with that is is that it's perfectly read readable, and I mean uh, and I mean that very strongly. Uh, so if someone new came up to this code base, not very impressive, but still, uh, and started reading that, started reading the models, uh, that, will be perfectly, uh, that will be perfectly clear to them what it does. This is a post model, it has such and such fields, and then, oh, you have two methods, and you can actually do two things with, you, with a post. You can either approve it, or um, given some condition is met, so if the status is, is approved, you can, uh, you can actually publish it, that will do something else. Uh, that will do something else with the um, with the uh, with the post. There is a couple of uh, uh, there is a couple of nice things. Uh, also, how how nicely having methods on the layer model ties with different with with all the different bits and pieces of Django. I'm going to skip that for now and just jump quickly to 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 to, to flat model. So as I said, it's it is easily testable. I agree with that. I hope you agree with that. That is nicely done. It's definitely perfectly readable. I mean, the, the cognitive load of someone new joining your project and reading something like that, it's going to be fine. I'm not completely sure that I agree with the, uh, with the opinion that this leads, in the end, to a code that is not repeated. I will come back to that. <coughs> and usually the cons presented to, uh, to this approach, what actually I'm giving this, uh, this talk right now, is that if you have a bigger system, 
than a small corporate block, and that's something that, that we usually work on, this might lead to very, very low, very, very large, very, very long models.py files in your every chunk of app. That can really, and I've seen examples like that, that can really lead to unmaintainably un large code base. That's some problem. The real problem that I see with this approach is that, in my opinion, it leads to some unoptimized solutions later on, some uh, 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 suboptimal database queries or suboptimal network requests if you're integrated with third party services uh, in the long run after your system has, has, uh, has grown a little bit. Uh, let, me just, uh, let me just show you that. Uh, there is, I'm going to skip that, there is this idea that you can put some kind of logic into forms, views or serializers. For example, I've seen a Django snippet uh, about actually logging in user or checking user logging uniqueness within the very uh, uh, login form, of, within the very sign up form. Please don't fucking do okay? No, just, no, we're not going to talk about that, no. Um, there has been proposed an idea as a direct solution to some of the problems they presented us uh, as cons of the first idea. So some people, um, uh, some people advocate the idea of providing yet another separate layer, they call it services, um, that's right, services layer between views and models. So this is not something that you usually get out that you will it's not something that you usually see in the vanilla Django system, but this is what some people do. So the idea is more or less uh, that you keep your models separate and within the models.py file you only keep the definition of your models and definition of your business objects and how they relate to other business, uh, business objects. But you put a separate, some, separate file, something like some people call it services.py, some people call it behavior, some people call it actions, where you put the actions, so where you put what those objects can do, <coughs> or what you can do with those objects, how you can act upon, uh, act upon those objects. So this would be a very simple example. You would have, this, this approach is not necessarily class-based, so you might have just very simple methods. You might have just the approved post method, which, which accepts just one post changes the status and saves it. Or, uh, this, also capture, this also captures the, uh, the business logic behind publishing a post. And you'll see this is, actually very sim this is actually very similar to what we have had before. It's just organized in a different way. And that's also why I don't really like this idea. First of all, I think that the cognitive load of coming up to, to, to a code space like that and writing that would not be perfectly clear to me. The only advantage I see of that is just cutting, uh, just taking one long file and putting it into two medium files or perhaps short files. Plus, also this so, uh, this approach will not force you to think about the uh, uh, about the suboptimal solutions that I really care about when I think about putting business logic in in, in, in models. So not to take a lot of time. Hmm? Let me. Uh, all right. Yeah. So it, it just uh, just a uh, just a uh, just a summary. I think the idea of using services is nicely testable. I mean, if you know how to test models, you probably know how to test services. There is a there is a very minor difference, meaning that you can test in this approach. If you incorporate the services <coughs> layer into your into your application, you might test models without services. There is probably not much to test, but still, it's possible. Something like validation or what they. They are constructed correctly, but you cannot test services without models. That's a minor thing. I'm not completely sure about readable. This might be dry depending on how you do it. I also come back to that. Uh, the problem. So these are these are the pros. The cons I see with that is uh, there is not much agreement about how to structure services in Django. So this will be pretty much on you. And still, this can lead to some of the problems that I have identified with putting. Um, now with putting a business uh, a business logic in, in models. So the last idea, the really the idea that I wanted to talk about is actually a very simple one. You have you might have guessed that by no, by looking at the title of the presentation. 
Um, so my idea, and, and something that I would like to convince you to do, is to implement methods like approve, or publish, or any other, those, those small simple methods, to implement those on the query system <coughs> managers level rather than on, uh, on, uh, on models. And, I mean that will be simple, there is a second step, and, and I mean that very seriously, I, I mean that very strongly, and to treat the case of approving or publishing just one blog post as just a special case of approving or publishing n for any n blog post. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, the reason why I'm saying, oh, the reason why I'm writing queries at slash managers is that in Jaguar you can very easily get one, one, one from the other. Let me actually just, just show you that. I'm not completely sure which is the best, uh, which is the best solution. But uh, the, the case of approving and publishing as implemented on the, on the query set level would look something like that. You have, uh, you have the uh, post model as it was with all the fields. We drop the methods there. We just use a, uh, a custom manager, and the manager is divorced from the query set using just the ask manager uh, method. And this is the query set that you, um, that, you, uh, that you write yourself. You have the approve method, which basically just updates all of its, all the objects contained within this query set with the status approved. This is, I know that this, this, in the real world, this won't do, this is a very simple example. But, that's, that's going to be enough for now. And then you have the publish method, which takes all the, uh, uh, which filters itself on its own to get only those uh, posts that are approved and updates them and uh, to make them published. Right? Perhaps that's something, perhaps that's something more, but that's the, um, uh, but that's the general, but that's, that's the general idea. A quick summary of this approach, I think, looks like that. I believe, I strongly believe that this solution is not more difficult to test. If you know how to write custom query sets or managers, and if you know how to test your models, you know how to test custom query sets or custom managers. Uh, I think this is perfectly readable in the sense that, again, if I came to a new project and uh, saw something and saw something like that, I would also be able to intuitively understand not only what this code does, but also the intention of the person who wrote it. I think that's very important. Right, so I would say, okay, I have a post uh, that has uh, such, and such, uh, such and such fields, but then actually managing those, managing sets of posts, uh, I can do two types of things on them. But now I operate on sets or collections of posts Rather than rather than individual uh, rather than individual uh, mm -hmm. posts, and that's just the just the uh, it's just one of the uh, one of the differences. Now, um, as we, as I said, I had some doubts whether starting with implementing business logic on on the model layer leads to dry code. The idea, uh, 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 the reason the, the reason I think that is. Uh, I think that a majority of the projects, whether you're working on a, uh, on a small startup, whether you're joining a, a big existing legacy system and, you are, uh, and you're implementing a new feature, sooner or later someone, can, uh, someone comes to you and says something like, oh this is nice, but you see our supervisors, so the people who approve our post don't really have a lot of time, so they would like to have uh, the ability to do batch actions, right? They don't, want to, they, don't, they don't want to need to go to every post and approve them, they want to have something like a list with checkboxes, and then they just check the uh, check the posts that, uh, that 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 should be approved, and just click approve once. And so what happens there? If you start with implementing business logic uh, using models, using the models approach, and this happens in the real world, and I honestly believe that this happens a lot, uh, is that you have two solutions: you either leave the code there within the models and you start writing some of the methods, start duplicating the code on the query set level as well, and that way you end up with a lot of repeated code. I mean, the code is not exactly the same in many places, but essentially does the same. Or you don't really care about that, and you do something stu stupid like looping over posts, and basically setting their state uh, in a loop and saving them individually. Which is also a, which is also a stupid idea. If you started with working with queries and managers, you're covered from the beginning. And this also touches the uh, the, the the optimized bit here, right? Um, do it, uh, um, approving 
five blog posts using the query set method. If you do that on the query set level, it's just one database query. If you do that using models, you have to do something. You have to do something tricky. But the interesting bit about that, okay, so this is, the, I think that's, that's fairly easy. The interesting bit about that is actually legs here. There is some drawback to this. Uh, when I really started thinking about that, and I actually started, uh, I've actually started implementing uh, this uh, uh, in one of the projects. I unfortunately couldn't do that from the beginning, but I've honestly, uh, I've honestly gone that, down this road. And what I realized is that checking the business logic rules or checking the business logic conditions in some of the cases gets more complicated. This is really interesting um, because as I've said, uh, yeah, right here. Because uh, if you really think, if uh, if you think about actions bearing bearing only one post in mind, it's very simple. You either approve a post or not. You either publish a post or not. That's simple. But what should happen when you have a set of posts that have different or mixed states, mixed statuses? Is not immediately clear, and this will actually uh, this will actually vary on your application. It will actually vary on the business that you are doing. Because one of the possible solutions is that you don't care about those objects that do not confront to a rule. Well, for example, here, even if uh, even if a supervisor selected ten posts and only uh, well, or someone a publisher selected only a, uh, selected ten posts, but only five of them, only half of them was approved. One thing you can do is you can just ignore the second half. Publish, the, publish those ones that can be published, that are publishable, and just present, probably show, show a warning to the user after you have done that. Okay, we have published five of your posts because such and such. Uh, and for corporate blog, that would probably work alright. But in some businesses, this is not something that you want to do. Right? So in, in, in some of the business, real world business applications, you, you want to fail early, you want to stop early. Saying that, okay, if you pass a query set comprising 10 posts and it's not the case that all of them can be published, you don't want to publish any of them. Right? For example, if you think about I don't know, booking airline tickets, right? that's probably a far-fetched uh, far idea, but it illustrates my point. If your, if your client, if your, if your user wanted to do a free hop flight, uh, if only two legs of this slide were available, you wouldn't go ahead and you wouldn't book the first one and the, and, and the last part, leaving, leaving the, the, middle, uh, the, the middle empty, right? You would just fail and say, hey, this action cannot be, uh, this action cannot be completed. Uh, so this is, this is something new, to, uh, this is something new to, uh, to think about. And this gets even, and that's the last part I, I want to talk about, this gets even more complicated when talking about integrating with external services or when working with, I mean, all of that works very nicely and I think you can re-implement all of that business logic on query set level in a very optimized way provided you use a relational database and provided that your data model is fairly reasonable. If you have a lot of the normalized, uh, the normalized subcluster subset of your data model, Perhaps some of the things you, you, you cannot really do without revolting to, to at least a couple of queries. Right, not counting sub-queries, not counting, yeah. This is not always the case with integrations. Uh, and with integrations you will, see a, you, will see a couple, you will see a couple of problems. In ideal situations when we are working with a mature service that has a very nice API, some of them will provide you with a method to do bot actions. Right? For example, this is uh, this is an example that if what if uh, uh, what if you would need somehow to integrate a, pay, a paying service with your posts, for example, you would need to pay in order to do something else with uh, with those posts. If you used a if you used a payment provider that allowed you to post a data a serialized data of a couple of posts, that's fine because then this. Would be just one network, uh, a network request that either fails or I mean comes through. Or a lot of things can happen, but the results are very binary. Either you can respond that okay, 200, this has been paid, or not, and you can roll back. And you don't, you don't really need to even roll back in this situation. Just do not update uh, your um, uh, your query set of posts, and you're fine. Uh, 
So you can do that. You can do something like that with PayPal. You can do something like that with Mailgun, SendGrid, and so on and so on. You can send a bot. You can send a uh, a package of emails to Mailgun in just one network request, and they will either accept the whole package or not. Let you know, and then they will of course internally queue it up and, and start sending it out. But as far as your integration is concerned, you're fine. You 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 you're good, right? Um, you will not see, uh, you, or you will see some some API or some services that do not allow uh, for that, and that's where more tricky things uh, start uh, start happening, because then you basically, depending on whether the rollback of the action that you require from a third party service is possible or not, or whether it's costly or not, you might see two, you, you might do two things. You either start sending payments, you either start you know, sending uh, external requests for every blog post and if all of them succeed, then you still update all of them with just one database query to your own database. If some of them fail, you need to take care of those that have come through and of those that have not come through. <coughs> Again, what you need to do with them will depend, will depend on the business that you're that you working for. And in the first situation, where you cannot really roll back, or where rolling back will be really costly to you or the customer, something like, I don't know, working with credit cards and doing a chargeback, you probably cannot even implement that. So you will, there will be situations in the, that in the end you will need to uh, uh, boil down to just calling some methods in a for loop, in a method, in a query set, uh, because there's basically no other way to um, to communicate with an external service and ensure consistency uh, of and ensure consistency of data. And yeah, that's the that's pretty much the idea. Any questions?